the reason why the, a lot of people say they don't want to get baptized is because one, uh, just because it's right, uh, just didn't feel like they wanted to, you know, like what's the point? I, I don't know, you know. But Christians is like he didn't grow a relationship yet with the Lord, and he didn't feel like it would maybe serve a, a great purpose if he didn't really know or have that relationship first. Like he doesn't want to have a do a needless thing without really knowing what he really was. Yes, you know? I was baptized when I was a baby, because I thought we all did when we were baby. <laughs> well, I didn't get baptized. Look, I didn't get baptized until I was 21. I was 21, okay? I'm the, not only the pastor's grandson, I play the drums. I used to be the youth leader. I used to be a lot of things at the church. I used to, you know, I was part of the holiness. I did a lot of stuff, and I hadn't gotten baptized yet, you know? And even when I was smaller, I was kind of scared of being baptized because I didn't understand completely what it meant to be baptized. What I thought you got at mind wasn't even what you meant or what you meant. It was kind of a, a combination of both. Because I thought, I had a misconception in mind of what baptism was. I thought when you got baptized, now you're going to change your life. Now you're going to really be a Christian. Now i got to stop, you know... Uh, same bad words. I gotta definitely stop eating all these unhealthy foods. I gotta stop asking this and fighting. So I thought I had to be perfect. When I was able, ready to get baptized, I'm like, okay, I'm not ready yet. Because I'm not ready to straighten out my life. I'm not ready to not sin anymore. That was the thing. I thought if I got baptized, I couldn't sin anymore. And I'm like, I don't want to get baptized and later mess up. And then be like, oh, I'm sorry, I failed you guys. And I always heard there was only one time you got baptized. You can't get baptized twice. And I'm like, if I screw it up, I'm going to wait till I'm older when I'm ready to be perfect. <laughs> and I didn't realize how wrong that was. It wasn't true. So what we're going to do uh, about this is um, in these classes we're going to give, I'm going to try to do it three classes. From the looks of it, I think I'm only going to need two, but I'm going to try to stretch it to three so that you guys really know what baptism is. Okay? Now, with these classes, you're going to get the knowledge, the understanding, and with the understanding, it's going to make you come with a decision if whether or not you're going to be, get baptized or you want to get baptized, okay? So, the things that I'm going to cover is things that are going to answer these kind of questions. Who is baptism for? What it is? When are you ready for it? Where is it done? Why is it done? How do you prepare for it? So, all the why, what, where, who, when, all those questions are going to be answered through this, okay? Now, the very first thing that I'm going to um, go through is, oh, what? What does the word baptism mean? Anybody know? Or have a brainstorm idea what it means? What does the word baptism mean? I've never heard it used in any other place. It's not like a word where you can use in a different way. Baptism is just the one word. Nobody knows what baptism means. Oh, the, uh, what when I said, uh, like, uh, be born again. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you could, you could say that, yeah. But the actual word. He said, be dunked in water, you're close. You're really close. That's actually what it means. That's actually exactly what it means. Yeah. Okay, the word, a lot of people, well, get away. <laughs> Look, baptism, if you, you get the word, it's actually from a Greek word that means baptizo. Okay? That word means immersed. Okay? What is, is immersed? What is, oh, I'm not going to do it. But it's immersed. Let's say you get some water and go like that. Let's sprinkle some water on you. Is that immersing him in water? No. no. Yes. What about like if I take a hose <laughs> and just spray him? <laughs> is, is, that, is, that, is that immersing him in water? No. Now, if I tank him and dunk him in a pool, would that be immersing him? Yes. Yeah, right? Because immerse means like entirely submerging him. Being underwater completely from head to toe. That's immersing. So, right off the bat, we know that when somebody, let's say, this, uh, I'm going to tell you straight up, like when they baptize babies and stuff, they don't dunk a baby in the water. They're just, just like, no way. They, they just sprinkle it. Now, that's not what the Bible teaches. The Bible doesn't teach that that's baptism. Okay? We're going we're gonna to see more as I go, you know. Well, about the baby, so there's just a little side note, okay? Now, uh, the uh, next thing I would say, what does baptism symbolize? What does it actually depict? Like if it's a stamp, if somebody takes a picture of somebody being dunked in the water, what does it mean? Like when you see somebody, 
Washing away your sins. Washing away your sins. That's awesome. Well, anybody else have input on it? What does it symbolize? There's a lot of things. It symbolizes that, let's say I see a picture of Jose, and he's being baptized. What does that tell me? That tells me that I know Jose knows that he needed forgiveness, that he, his, his life is full of mess-ups, full of screw-ups, full of wrongdoings, you know, because you're a horrible person. <laughs> no, it's not. But, you know, you, know you, you recognize that you've messed up a lot, you know? And, and when I see a picture of you ba being baptized, you, it's like telling me that Jose knows that he's not perfect and that he needs forgiveness, okay? It also means you decided to let go and let God and you decided to accept Jesus in your heart. That's another thing it tells you. Another thing it tells you is that it's Jose's decision to let the way he used to live in his sin and doing all the things that messed up you know, his life, the things that are wrong, he decided to have that part of himself die and that when he would come out of the water, that he it symbolizes him leaving his dirt behind in the water and continuing brand new again. That's what it symbolizes too. It's our decision to let God cleanse us with his forgiveness through his blood that he shed on the cross. Okay? It also... Uh, is our decision to resurrect ourselves. This is a big one. It's an outward symbol of what's happening inside. So when you see somebody being baptized, is it just him or her and the pastor and no one else is watching? When usually you have people baptizing, are just people that are going to be baptized there? No. In some cases, maybe there's a lot of people there getting baptized, but most of the time, family, friends, you know, family members, church members, all there to support the people that are being baptized. Because, so what you're doing is it's a public kind of announcement. You're showing everybody, hey, what I'm doing here, what you're seeing, means something outside of my body that's showing you what's happening inside of me. It's my decision inside that now something has changed in me, in my heart. And that's what it symbolizes. When they see you doing that, it's because they see that, Oh, that guy is undergoing this change and he has accepted the Lord Jesus Christ in his heart. He's accepted that and it's getting, or she's accepted that and it's changing. That's, that it's a symbol, an outward symbol of people of letting them know what's happening inside your life. That you're, you're ready to just be done with, with your old self and be renewed. Okay? Now, it, and it, the last thing, it, it shows our obedience. I'm going to uh, explain how it shows our obedience when... God wants us to get baptized, it show us, shows him that we're obeying him. And I'm going to show you what that means. Now, this is where we're going to get into our Everybody Bibles. open the Bible to Matthew 3. Everybody open up Matthew 3. Can you know, just look for Matthew 3? Matthew. Matthew, Mateo, 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 Mateo 3. Okay? Oh, which, which page? When somebody has the page, please say the page. Matthew 538. 538. All right, look. While you guys are looking that up, this is the question it's answering, okay? Where in the Bible does it first mention Matthew chapter 3? Where is the word or the use of baptism first mentioned in the whole Bible? It's in the New Testament, Matthew chapter 3, okay? Let's read it, okay? So, Matthew chapter 3, he said 538. Matthew 530. Damn, that does really help. All right. So, <laughs> all right. Um, we're going to read 1 through 6, okay? Follow me. Okay? 1 through 6. It says, In those days, John the Baptist came, preaching in the wilderness of Judea, and saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. This is... He who was spoken of through the prophet Isaiah, a voice of one calling in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord, make straight the paths for him. John's clothes were made of cam camel's hair, and he had a leather belt around his waist. His food was locusts and wild honey. People went out to him from Jerusalem and all Judea and the whole region of the Jordan, confessing their sins. They were baptized by him in the Jordan River. All right. Some background. Let's talk about this John the Baptist guy. Anybody know who John the Baptist is? Okay. John the Baptist is this, I, in my opinion, is this rough man versus wild kind of guy. 
okay? It depicted he had a like freaking belt made out of camel's hair. He ate grasshoppers for lunch, you know? He lived in the wilderness outside. But in, in the Old Testament, it was talking, um, the prophet Isaiah, like he was saying, there's going to be this guy in the future that's going to prepare the way for the Lord. Because Jesus was born already. And a lot of people don't know this, but John was actually Jesus' cousin. So a lot of people thought John himself was Jesus. But John said, no, that's not me. Okay, I'm the one preparing the way for the one that's to come, for the Messiah. Okay, I'm not worthy, not even to wear his sandals when he comes. When he comes, all is going to be completed. Okay, so John is saying, okay, this guy's going to come. Now, prepare yourselves. Prepare yourselves because the kingdom of heaven is near. Repent and, of your sins and be baptized. Okay, that's what he says, okay? Repent and be baptized. Now it says, how do we prepare, prepare to be baptized? What things do we do first? We can't just say, you guys want to go get baptized? Okay, let's go to a pool. Let's go out. Let's see, uh, find somebody bathtub. Fill it up. Let's dunk him with, man. Baptize. <laughs> Holy Ghost. No. That's not how it goes. Okay? That's not how it works. You got to prepare first. You got to know why you're doing it. Okay? It's like any other thing. You don't just jump into it not knowing what the outcome is for or what, what's the reason behind it. That's like a waste of your life. You know? Plus, what I felt when I got baptized, I learned more about what it really meant afterwards. And what happened was, I was like, Dang it, man, if I would have known this before I got baptized, I would have felt more meaning to me being baptized. I knew a little bit about being baptized. I didn't know the whole thing. But afterwards, I was like, I can't get baptized again. But I feel so bad because I didn't know how what it really meant. And I want to feel really sorry. I want to kind of like, because it's supposed to be the washing of your sins. And I didn't completely know that. But now afterwards that I knew it, I'm like, gosh, I'm still dirty though. I need to get back into that water and just shimmy it all off in the water. And come back out and come squeaky clean. But that's not how it works, you know? So, but look, focal point one, how do you prepare to be baptized? He says, John the Baptist says, repent of your sins. Number one thing, that's on the checklist, checkbox. Before you get baptized, you must repent of your sins. What does repent mean? What? Turn away from sin. What other things? What? Like, yeah. like saying asking for forgiveness, yes, exactly. Like admitting that admitting you're wrong. Look, I just looked it up. Uh, it said to make a change for the better as a result of remorse or like feeling sorry for the sin that you have committed against God. So repenting. It's like apologizing. But apologizing not for one sin, but for all the stuff you did against God. Because each sin we do, a lot of people don't understand this. And it's hard to comprehend sometimes. Each time you sin... It's like this. Let's say there's a door in front of me, okay? When I open that door, God's right there, and he's ready to help me out. He's ready there to shower blessings on my life. He's there to save me. He's there to protect me and give me what I need. But the moment I sin and keep sinning purposely, I'm shutting the door. I'm shutting the door. God isn't shutting the door. I'm putting that door. That door represents a wall of sin, and I'm saying, I could do without you right now, and I'm blocking him from entering my life. And then a lot of people say, how come God lets bad things happen to good people? And they blame God for it, but you know what? It's not God's fault at all. It's a misconception. It's because of the way we live. We're putting a wall up and shutting a door where God can't touch our lives. That's when God can't answer prayers. That's when God can't heal you because you're not allowing Him to heal you. It's not that He can't heal you. He just is not... It's like He's probably going to shower you your way, making... Maybe He's trying to reach you and grab you and heal you, but he can't touch you if you're like running away from his hand and you're like blocking him, knowing like dodging him or whatever. Sometimes he's putting so many things your way that it makes it so obvious that he's trying to touch your life. He's putting people in your path. He's giving you a friend that you didn't have before out of the blue. Like I remember when Eddie was saying, you're on the pier, I think, and then all of a sudden, where? Yeah, the, the one fool. And, and you're on the pier, and he was trying, and you were like, man, you're following me everywhere. No, I don't know he's stalking me. Or he, he, he felt like he was stalking you. But then he's like, let me sit down with you and pray. You got to pray. And then you said the clouds started opening, and they started closing yeah. every time you started to pray. It was raining on it. Yeah, and then God's like, hello, I'm making it too obvious for you now, Eddie. Come on, change your life. I've tried to get you every other way, but you let me make this supernatural thing happen and open the cloud. Maybe you'll 
let your pilas turn on, you know? So, and, and sometimes the good thing is Eddie accepted that. He realized it. But for a lot of other people, they don't. It could be so clear like night and day, and people say, no, no, thank you still. That doesn't make sense. I don't get why. But that's why it's up to us, the ones that have already accepted the Lord, to keep pushing, keep pushing, and keep telling that person. You're saying sorry to God. Now, this is a, a huge thing, okay? Now, not only the definition, but another word for it. Like, I like sometimes when I don't know what a word means, I look what a synonym is. Okay, I use a synonym. You know? Synonym. A synonym. A comparable word that means the same thing, or somewhat. And I was thinking about it. What's another word for, for repentance? Feeling sorry and stuff. I thought of surrender. I thought of surrender. Because how do you say that in Spanish? Surrender. Surrender. It's like, like, like I say the police is getting me, right? No, I surrender. I surrender. What? Rendirse. 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 Okay? All right, rendirse. No, no. But look, listen. It's like surrendering to him. Because before... When you're surrendering, before you're surrendered, you're basically blocking somebody or fighting against somebody. You don't surrender just because you're walking, nothing's happening. Oh, I surrendered! No, no. Something is happening. You're fighting between somebody. Okay? It's you and a group of people or you and one person. But when you surrender, it's because there's some kind of battle going on. And when I think of repentance, it's like I think of surrendering because you are in a battle against God, which isn't a battle you want to be in. Because it's somebody who wants to help you, not destroy you, okay? The kind of battle that we don't want to surrender is against the devil. And when we least expect it, that's the one we're fighting with, not against. We're supposed to be fighting with God. We're not supposed to be fighting against God. So we need to let that door open and surrender him. I surrender, come into my life. He's not going to kill you. He's going to resurrect you. He's going to make sure that when you die one day, throughout this life, you have a long life, blessings full of it, and you'll be able to go to heaven, no? So, repentance, surrendering. I told you about, okay, nothing, sin, uh, it goes without saying, I said sin separates us from him. Okay, now, John the Baptist says, repent and be baptized, right? Why? He says, repent and be baptized because what? If you need to read it again, it says right there. He says, repent and be baptized because something is coming. The kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven is coming. It says, repent and be baptized because the kingdom is near. That's what it says. The kingdom of heaven is near. All right? What's the kingdom of heaven? It's so... <laughs> so I was good answer. Good answer. It doesn't mean that. But that was very observant. <laughs> I love his story. That's my sister. But uh, the kingdom of heaven, what does the battery, what does the kingdom of heaven mean? That was honest. Yeah, but... I think of it, think of it like this: the kingdom of heaven. Okay, do you think do you have an idea what it means? Eternal life. Eternal life. That's what yeah, I just said. eternal life. Okay. <laughs> well, Subi, what do you think it means? The kingdom of heaven. What does that include? House of God. I swear we would open this, you guys. Listen. Think of it like this. Think of it like this. It, think of a gym membership. When you go and you get a gym membership, you have a certain amenities that are included. I got the pool, I got the workout area, I got the weights, I got the jacuzzi, I got the, the sauna, I got the steam room, I got the showers, I got the everything. Those are the things that are included in a gym membership. Now, in the kingdom of heaven, think of it as a membership. Okay, what comes included? Okay, first thing I think of is automatically forgiveness. You have forgiveness when you're a member of the kingdom of heaven. Two, you have grace and mercy. Because you screwed up and did a whole bunch of things against God, God has all the right in the world to come back at you and give you twice or more of what you deserve and judge you and condemn you. But he doesn't because you're the member of the kingdom of heaven. Grace and mercy is yours. Don't worry. You did all that stuff, but I forgive you. Now, blessings. Who doesn't want blessings? Okay? A blessing is something that God can give you physically. He can, could be a Bible. It could be a home, a shelter, food, clothing. Or it could be something on the inside, peace, happiness, you know, humility. To be able to help somebody that's in need. To be able to feel like you're not alone, you know. Another thing, guidance. To be a member of the kingdom of heaven, you're going to have guidance. You're going to have the one person through this Bible 
It's going to tell you everything you need to know on how to live your life. All the questions you might have, there's the answer right there. You, as a member of the kingdom of heaven, you're going to have all the answers. Okay? Member of the kingdom of heaven, you have happiness, strength. This is huge. Love. You're going to feel love. Okay? Because despite people, maybe if your parents die and like you have no family, okay, you're still going to have God. Always. He's not physically here, but he's more here than someone who's physically here because he's the one that made you. Okay? Not only that, I, I love this one. And you know what? I'm going to keep going at the end. I'm going to tell you to feel included. When you're a, mem a member of somewhere, you're a member of the kingdom of heaven or a member of a gym, or a member of a school, you're included in a group. So you have that acceptance that you're included in something. Okay? So you have that, that, that sense of including, uh, being included. Encouragement. You have that endless amount of encouragement. You know, with God and to do right because God even He's you don't want to bargain with God, you don't want to make a deal with God, but in a way, you kind of do. Because God says, You live this way, and I'll give you this way of life. You honor your mother and father, you know what? I'm gonna make a deal with you. I'll give you a long life here, a good long life. I'll make you prosper, I'll make you happy. Just live this way, and I'll give you this. You know, it's the good kind of deals you want to make. Now, motivation. In, inside of us, we all have this, I like to think of it as, you know the, I don't know why I want to say hueca, but what is that called, thing called, like, a candle, and you have the, like, the little string? The little string? The, the, string. the, the Just the string. You guys know what I'm talking about, right? The wick. The wick. Wick. Yeah, wick. Wick. So, everybody has the, a wick in them. Think of it in your heart. You have this little thing that needs to be turned on. Without that I'm turned on, you're empty. There's something missing in you. And everybody has that emptiness inside of them before they meet God. But when you truly meet God and you give your life to Him, all of a sudden something comes into your heart, match it on, you're lit up forever. It's there. No matter what you go through, that's going to forever be lit. Now what happens in our life though, that the flame could be suppressed, but it will never stop being on. You're, it's permanently turned on. Okay, and I'm going to go over what that flame is more once we keep going. Now, what it also means to be a member of the kingdom of heaven is that we were once blind, but now because we have that fire lit in us, now we can see. We can see what it really, what we were really missing when we were in the dark. Okay? And more. Okay? Now, how, now we know what it means to be a member for the most part. Remember, so the member of the kingdom of heaven, when he says, repent because the kingdom of heaven is coming, it's like Gold's Gym is coming to town, you know? Get, sign up, be a member. Just like, like God, you know, hey, Jesus is coming. He is the kingdom of heaven. He's the way to sign up to get the keys to go into heaven. Even the Bible says that I am the key to heaven. No one is to go to the Father who's up in heaven if not through me. So you got to sign up with him. To sign up, you got to repent. Okay, you repent, you get that membership into heaven. Now, how, how, but how do you really become a member? Okay, just like he was saying, you plus something equals kingdom of heaven. You're a member. Let me see if you guys are paying attention now. You plus what equals heaven? Jesus. Repentance. Repentance. <laughs> now, without repentance, membership cannot be given. Now, this is a huge question. Haiti actually asked me this. We know, we know this, that we need to, listen, listen, we know that we need to repent. <laughs> We got to say, hey, God, please forgive me for all my sins. And this, you know, when I was little, I would fit that into all my prayers. God, please forgive me for all my sins, all the sins I did yesterday, all the sins I'm doing today, the ones I'm going to do, please forgive me for all my sins. There. I just, every day, every day, I'm like, cover, 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 I'm good to go, you know. And then, and then somebody tells me, I think Haiti told me, but she knew, she kind of thought she knew the answer, but it was a rhetorical question. It's like, how come when we first repent to God and we accept him in our life because he's forgiven us you know and why can't we just make a prayer that's like like uh, like the one I told you forgive me for all the sins I've committed all the sins I'm committing right now and all the sins that are to come because God you're the same yesterday today tomorrow forever I could just make one prayer and you're that powerful you forgive me forever then forget I don't have to pray no more I'm good for life I'm going to heaven you know let me go and, you know, sin a whole bunch. I'm already forgiven. I prayed way back when. No, no, that's not what it says. 
Okay, that's a misconception. People don't know that Billy's like, oh. <laughs> no, no. He's like, oh man, I didn't know I could do that. No. Listen. In the in the in the Bible it says that we must live a life of repentance. Now, does that mean though? Every day? It means live a life of repentance daily. Every day. Does that mean say I'm sorry every single day? It says say I'm sorry every single day? That's what I have to do with it. That's what it means? Oh, no, you have to not do it. Try I don't really do it, not, not do it. But the, 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 the general thing is your actions speak louder than words. The way you live is how you're going to show you're living a life of repentance. How many of you guys have brothers or sisters? How many of you ever fought with your brother and sister? And what do your parents say when you go up to your parent and you say, I'm sorry? What has your parent told you back? Like, okay, I forgive you. But remember, sorry means you don't do it again. Your actions are going to tell me you were really sorry. If you do it again, you weren't really sorry. You weren't really sorry. You just wanted to say it so that I don't punish you. So I don't, you know, keep going back at you and saying, well, you know what, because you do whatever. No, but you say sorry, it's done. You know? It's your, that's how <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but look, but, but look, listen, okay, saying you're sorry doesn't cut it every day, living a life of repentance is a living a life every day, not trying not to do those things that want, you did once, you were like a purposeful sinner every day, you know, try to minimize it, I'm, wait, listen, listen, doesn't mean, this is where I got it mixed up, doesn't mean you're perfect, you don't do any sins, and then the thing is, once you do one sin, then you're like, ah. Oh. And then and you're like, you start the whole other day, well, I'm just going to, I screwed up today, I'm going to just keep sinning it up today. Tomorrow I'll start fresh, 24 hours. You know? And that's not what it means. And that's not what it means. Okay? Do you remember that all the kingdom of heaven? Love to feel included, encouragement, and motivation. That's what it means to be a member of the of, of church, of to be a member of the kingdom of heaven. Love to feel included, motivate, encouragement, stuff like that. And that's sometimes the last things that we are doing, especially in the holiness. Okay? A lot of times, we don't motivate each other. When we're talking amongst ourselves, when class is going, when a message is being given, or when we're downstairs and we're outside while a message is being given, we're, we're on our phones, you're not motivating anybody, you're not encouraging anybody. If, not, if anything, you're influencing them to do the opposite. You're here, but you're not here. Okay? You don't want to do that. We need to love one another. We need to stop talking about one another. We stop dividing everybody. You know, we need to motivate each other. We gotta keep that flame illuminated in everybody. Imagine somebody's talking like this, and we're all talking like this, like I'm talking to you guys every day with every hobin. When a hobin comes in, and I want to see them, hey, how you doing, man? Give him a handshake. Give him a hug. Hey, what's your name? You know, don't just say, oh hi, do some video. That's good, but come on, don't. How did you, hey, how did you feel? Stand up. Stand up really quick. Stand up. Come over here. Come over here. First, this is funny. But I was like, what's up, Eddie, man? So I go to see. What's up? What's up? How you doing, man? Like, something like that. Right? The first thing Eddie ever did. The first thing ever Eddie ever did. He goes, I'm like, hey, what's up? What's up? Like, what, like that? Whoa, whoa. Okay. Well, so, wait. You. You're going to sock me. You know? But he realized that that's what I wasn't going to do. Little by little, he knows what I do. I go, hey, what's up, man? He's like, yeah, I'm doing good. Or with Jose. You can sit down. Jose, how you doing? I'm feeling awesome. That's what he always says. Oh, man, that's good. You know? But that connection, we do good. We do that. We need to get out of our comfort zones. To be in a comfort zone the way we used to be, that's why we are baptized. So we leave that self and start changing. Start to illuminate the fire that's in us. Because that's how we're going to get other people to come. If I was just the same boring guy that I used to be, you know, I'm not going to get people to come to church. Okay? We want to stay in our little circle. I can stay being a Christian. Oh, yeah, That's not how it's done. Okay? A fire is not hot because it's cold. It's hot because it's hot. It's on. That's what we need to be. Okay? Do you know what I mean, guys? Yeah.